Now, you were mentioning before that you have this unusual trajectory in that you were a producer before you maybe even realized that you had the talent to sing. And maybe this has given you an edge in some ways because you've maintained control over your own productions and you've also produced a number of artists, both known and unknown. So I was hoping you could enlighten the good people at Rototom Sunsplash uh, a little bit about your approach to music production and exactly who are the artists that you've worked with so far, in addition to your own work. Yeah. <laughs> you see, well, making music is a spiritual thing, you know? it's very hard to explain it. You know, it's, it's, I think it is really impossible to, you know, successfully disclose the whole details of making music, you know, but I could give it a try. <laughs> I started out singing at the, from ever since, from birth, because my father chronicle, all who know chronicle, you know, chronicle bless of yourself anyway day in the world, you know. My father is one of the men who was instrumental and still is in the whole sound system thing from Black Cat to Massive B between America and Jamaica and even here in Europe too. You know, with a lot of sound systems from Spain and France and all over. So, growing up, you know, I watched my father dedicate his life to dance all and the whole building of a culture and sound systems and all of them things. And I was always doing music. You know, it wasn't really a choice or something that you choose to do. It was like a lifestyle, you know? You wake up, you sing, you dance, you know? You dress up and perform. Because my father used to love when we perform for him, you know? And whenever he's making music, he like when we dance and them things because we were his biggest fans, you know what I mean? You know, and like Little, Little Joe and many others, you know, a lot of artists in Jamaica, they, they, don't, they never really get that opportunity because of the fault within the industry and the government and everything, you know? They never really get the chance for the world to see them, you know? So having your children as your fans, and you know, it, it was very meaningful to him. So we used to dress up and perform for him every day. And when he was away, we performed for each other, keep our own little stage show. At that time, I was like six years old, you know, dress up and we use mop sticks and broomsticks as a mic and give his buckle as a microphone. So from ever since we're doing music, you know, but watching the struggles that my father went through as an artist and as a singer, you know, I was, I found that one of the major issues with my father was management and production. Because the talent was there, but, you know, we lack people with vision within reggae. You know what I mean? People who look beyond the industry and look beyond the popular song, you know? People who feel the music first, who walk around with the music five years as a feelings before them even put it down on a record, you know? So, from a young age, I was very into music and growing up in church, you know, we learned a lot about musical instruments and stuff like that. You know, I was choir director from as early as 13, 14 years old, you know, so we get a lot of exposure to sonics, harmony, sound, music, you know. So from, I started to pursue you know, production from a very young age. And I used to go to studio every day and I watch people like Steely and Cleavy, Danny Basie, and all of them people, like Bill Rhythm and thing, you know. I met Danny Brown and too, and thing. And, you know, I was very interested by the mixing board and all of the different ways how people can make music, you know. So I pursued it and I used to leave high school every day from first grade, from first form, go straight up to advanced level. I leave school every day before school over sometime and go straight to the studio. 
sometimes there's nothing to do because he's just a little school youth. No man not make it too mess with him computer and them things there. You because know? them things there is scarce commodity in Jamaica. And if you break it, you have to pay a fee. So, we find myself in the studio making music till people realize, hey, yeah, the music sound good and, you know, and without pay and without any form of compensation, monetarily, I produce a lot of readings, a lot of songs as a freelance producer for producers, you know, and, you know, from there, it now become a thing now where, you know, under the council of Teflon from Zingfence, people like Little Joe, people like Dre Island, who I knew, I met Dre Island as a producer also. You know, he was working on a production and me and him co-produced some songs for artists. That's how I met Dre Island and found out at that point that he could also sing. So I was like, we could just produce, me and produce some songs for you, you know? So J. Allen was one of the first persons that actually produced a track for him. That song is still not yet released. <laughs> yeah. um, I think it is one of, one of the best pieces of work I've ever spent time with, you know? And um, slowly, you know, we discover that there is work to do because you can run all you want, you know? But there comes a time when the music take control, you know? And that is what happened in my case, you know? And I, I, I got a clear thing from the Almighty that if you do my work, I will never make you have to worry about anything. If you go out there and herald my message and my energy in the lives of people, you will never have to worry about anything. You will never have to worry about your safety. You will never have to worry about money. You will never have to worry about your health. You will never have to worry about anything. And that was a fair deal for me. So, <laughs> yeah, I was very interested in that, you know? So there was a lot of things that had to be rearranged for that. Because as a producer, you's not really out there representing. But now as an artist, you have to take on that kind of lifestyle. So, you know, just slowly lead I and I on to Rastafari and from there to even other spiritual expressions and other, you know, mysticisms and things. And you find that now the world becomes a different place. And you start feel music now. You don't hear it no more. You don't make it no more. You just feel it. And you just think it into being, you know? So, yeah, and you know, that as a producer, still, is a great privilege. All of us here are producers, from Micah to Infinite, you know? Infinite was one of instrumental in the whole capitalist project that featured Kabaka Pyramid and Protege Warrior, you know? Myself and Infinite, you know, Infinite was very instrumental in that project. You know, Exile did do a lot of production. Micah Shemaya, I watched Micah Shemaya record him oneself and all of them things, you know. So, and it, it comes out of unfortunate situations because nobody wants to record what we were singing. You know what I mean? We are singing about truths and rights. We are singing about eat good, live healthy. Nobody really wants to invest in an artist who is doing that at that time. I'm sure now people would really want to do that. But at that moment in time, we had to extend ourselves to our own benefit, you know? We had to press record for ourselves. We had to mix our own music, even though we weren't experts at mixing and engineering. We had to do what we had to do, you know? And it's that same principle up until now, and that became a sound and it became a movement, you know? It is out of... You know, it is out of our, you know, demeaning situation, out of humiliating situations where you go to producers and one out of two things, either them tell them can't work with your art, them try to find some way to try to dilute what you're doing. And 
that couldn't work. Neither of the above was acceptable for me. So I, you know, even while I now realize that yeah, I have to go out there and sing music, I still have to be producing, you know. So, you know, one of the greatest things is that now you have a different understanding of music. Yeah. Thank you.